In this brief video, we're going to discuss the uses of graduated symbols and graduated color ramps for displaying differences in quantity between spatial units. Graduated symbols are going to be used in the case of point files where each individual dot represents some quantity. And we're going to use color ramps for polygons, such as these administrative units or districts, for displaying differences in quantity between these spatial units measured in polygons. With the two shape files available, I have a human population estimate for the individual polygon stored as an attribute in the table of the admin two counts. If I open this attribute table and I scroll to the right, here I have the human population estimate for each polygon estimated from a zonal statistics routine using the world pop population raster file and that's described in a previous video on this channel. First, let's look at a choropleth map or a color ramp where we're going to change the color or intensity of color as the population or the values in that attribute column increase. We control the color ramp in the symbology. So I'm going to double click on the name, open the layer properties, and under symbology, I'm going to switch from single symbol to graduated. I'm going to select the column that's storing the data, in this case sum that we described a moment ago. I'm going to select a color ramp. I'm going to select Viridis, and then I'm going to invert this color ramp. And this color ramp matches a similar color ramp to that used in WorldPop if you go and look at those raster data. For this example, I'm just going to select natural breaks or the jinx method. I have a single attribute I want to display for a single time period, so I'm going to allow QGIS to decide for me the best way to subdivide those classes. And since I have a high number of polygons, I'm going to select 10 classes and apply. And now I have a color ramp where the closer we get to deep blue or purple, the larger the population. And those specific values, the range of those values is stored inside of the uh, attributes or inside of the layer properties and there's a legend provided this would be the legend displayed if we inserted a legend into this map. So the darker the color gets the closer it gets to purple the higher the population the closer we get to yellow the lower the population. So that's a basic choropleth map. Now let's look at how we would graduate points to make uh, an easy map for the reader to see where individual points had higher or lower value. When we display points, changing the in individual color of points uh, isn't intuitive for the reader or doesn't make an easy to spot difference between high values and low values. Let's take a look at an example. Here I have an attribute, V and M pop sum. So I have the individual population uh, surrounding each individual point within a one kilometer radius. And if you want to see how we derive this field, uh, go and see our video on buffering and zonal statistics on this channel. So we control the symbology and the layer properties for points, just like we do for polygons. And if I select a graduated by column and I classify using the natural breaks and 10 classes and the same color ramp that I selected just a moment ago I end up with a color ramp of yellow green and purple and blue dots and it becomes a bit difficult to see exactly where those are on screen. Or the reader's eye is having a hard time determining where quantities are increasing 
with just color increases. So let's take a look at how we change size instead of color. So I'm going to launch the layer properties and I'm still going to have a graduation and I'm still going to use the VNM pop sum but this time I'm going to select the method to be size instead of color. I'm still going to use natural breaks in 10 classes and hit apply. And now we can see that my map is much easier to interpret where I have large values and where I have small values. So in summary, when we're working with population data or some graduated value, some increasing value is going to be associated with an increasing color or size on the map, we can set that rule based on whether we're using polygons or points. We're going to use graduated colors or a color ramp to change the or display the intensity of values in polygons like we can see on screen here. However, when we have points and we want to graduate, we're going to graduate the symbol so that we can quickly see where there are large and small symbols. We know there are high and low values respectively.